This video was brought to you by Wondershare Filmora. Hey everyone, my name is Anthony, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Wondershare's Filmora X, also known as Filmora 10, and I'm gonna be giving you my first impressions along with a quick review. I've been aware of Filmora since 2017, when I needed something better than iMovie to edit with and ultimately chose Filmora. I was editing videos with it for a while, then in 2018 I started doing YouTube, and Filmora was pretty much essential to helping me get my channel off the ground. Not only did I edit some of my early videos with it, I also made a bunch of tutorials that to this day are some of the most popular videos on my channel. In the days since, I've used lots of different editors, but I still make Filmora content from time to time, and it is still a great editor that I recommend to anyone who wants something fun and easy to use. And now, their newest version, Filmora X, is here. I have it up on my computer right now, so let's go over and take a look. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Welcome to my desktop. Let me just scoot over a bit. So here we go, Wondershare Filmora X. As you can see up in the corner right here, let's just click it. We've got a very nice refreshed loading screen. All right, so here we are in the new Filmora X interface. Something that I remember from the last big Filmora update, which was Filmora 8 to Filmora 9. I remember that there was definitely a lot that had changed. It almost felt like an entirely different software after that update. Uh, but this time, it actually feels relatively the same. Now, this video is not a full tutorial, so I'm not gonna go over absolutely everything, but I am gonna check out some of the new music and titles and stuff like that. Actually, it looks like all the music is the same as before. Never mind. Okay, so we've got some of the same stuff. Let that download real quick. Um, I recognize this template from older versions. This one right here. I'm pretty sure I remember that from Filmora 8. They look very professional, so if you want to add that nice little touch to your video. Going into transitions, uh, it looks like this is about the same as before. Uh, so we aren't oh actually wait just a second i'm not sure how i feel about some of these i guess it just depends on the style of the video you're going for but yeah that's kind of cool we've got the new elements this one right in time for halloween and some of the same ones from before this one is interesting i think that's new a cut banana so yeah that's all of the new stuff up there okay so the feature that i am the most excited for and to be honest it's the one that's been hyped up the most is motion tracking. Now, motion tracking is kind of a big deal. It can be for things as basic as having text follow an object across the frame, and motion tracking also plays a big role in special effects. For example, these ones from my friend Trevor. He's made loads of VFX shots like this one right here, and this one, and this one, and they all use motion tracking in some form or another. But is motion tracking really that good in Filmora 10? Well, let's find out. What is your expert opinion of the motion tracking in Filmora? Like as someone who uses motion tracking on a frequent basis, you know? It's good at what it's trying to do, like a text following a person, which just bumps up your production value, like significantly, that, that stuff like makes a difference. Very, very easy to use, I will say. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was like my main thing when I like first tried out, tested out the motion tracking is like you literally, mm -hmm. it's so easy. You just drag a box around the object, hit track. So one of the other new features is color match. That's a really good effect. I use that in any visual effect project. If, if I have like an After Effects timeline, there is a red giant color matcher there because it just, you press a button, your whole edit flows better. Basically the way you do color match is you've got the two clips that you want to match in the timeline. You click on one of them, you go to the color tab, you go right here to color match, hit the check mark, hit comparison view, select the frame that you want to match to. In this case, I want to match the pumpkin clip to the island shot, so I'm going to hit match. And there you go, just like that, Filmora automatically adjusts the colors of the island clip to the pumpkin clip. If I don't like it, or if it's too strong, which it sometimes is, I can just go over here to the level slider, and I can drag it down maybe to about 75%. I can also go into advanced and make a few additional changes. For example, I think something like raising the exposure would help it match the pumpkin clip even more. Hit okay, and boom, there you go. So. As, as the professional editor that you are, how, how would you sum up Filmora? I do still come back to Filmora. It's a very easy to use interface. And if you're just cutting, pasting, sliding, and getting your stuff together, it's way easier to use than like a complicated like layout like Premiere. Okay, the final new Filmora feature that I'm going to talk about today, just found my keyboard there, 
are the keyframes. Okay, so basically what keyframes do are allow you to animate camera movement, things like animating a zoom in and zoom out, or panning over to another person in the frame. Again, it's just one of those things that adds a slightly more polished touch to your videos. Uh, if you want to put in the time, I don't always do that sort of thing, uh, but it is there if you need it. In conclusion, Filmora 10 is a great update. Motion tracking is obviously the big new feature. It adds a whole new level of professionalism to your videos, and most importantly, it's really easy to use. If you've never used Filmora before and you're considering whether or not to buy it, I'd recommend it if you're a beginner or an intermediate user. Maybe you're moving on from something like iMovie or HitFilm, you know, basic free editors, maybe even Windows Movie Maker if you happen to still have that installed. I know it's been discontinued by Microsoft. If Filmora 10 looks too basic for your needs, I would recommend checking out something like Filmora Pro. I've used it a couple of times and I've made a few videos on it, but yeah. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and also consider subscribing if you haven't. I'm currently a little over 3,000 subscribers and 5,000 is my next goal and after that 10,000. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, please, please consider. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.